so guys next thing that we will going to discuss is the select system call so select system calls allows the server machine to monitor multiple clients connected connections and check which client has sent the data to the process so select system call is used to monitor multiple clients which are already connected with the server and using select system call the server keeps monitoring the multiple clients connections and check that which client has sent data and which client needs a service so you can understand it like this suppose there is a client c1 there is a client c2 and there is a client c3 all these clients are connected to the server right so all these clients that is c1 c2 c3 are already connected with the server s so at any point of time the client c1 can send a data to the server s a client c2 can send data to the server s or a client c3 can send a data to the server s so using select system call the server s monitors the connections of the client c1 c2 and c3 at the same time that is in whatever order or in whatever sequence any of these client sends a data to the server s the server s will be in a position to identify that which client has sent a data and which client needs a service right so select system call helps the server s to achieve simultaneous monitor of connected clients in addition suppose there is a client c4 which is not connected to the server s but sends a new connection initiation request to the server s so using select system call the server s not only can monitor the existing connected clients but it can also monitor the new connection initiation request that is sent by the new client to the server right so select system call is actually used to monitor multiple file descriptors so you can relate it to this example that just like in a class the monitor that is the class monitor keeps an eye on all the students of the class at the same time using select system call the server also keeps an eye on all the file descriptors of connected clients as well as it also monitor the arrival of new connection initiation request from new clients and appropriately server s can take an action select system call is a blocking system call that is the moment the server calls the select system call the select system call gets blocked right so blocking system call means that when the select system call is executed the code execution halts for example you may have written your own small programs in which you have in which you must have used the functions like scanf or get ch right and you must have experienced that the call to these functions actually halt the execution of a program similarly the select system call also blocks the execution of a program so such calls are called as blocking system call and select system call is one such blocking system call select system call unblocks when either of the two things happen on the server side that is either a server receives the new connection request from new client that is when the new client c4 sends the new connection initiation request to the server s the server s unblocks from the select system call so this is the scenario 1 and the server s unblocks from the select system call when data request from existing connected client arrives so this is the scenario with client c1 c2 and c3 right so the server unblocks from the select system call when either the event 1 happens or either the event 2 happens so when select system call unblocks server needs to check whether it's a new connection request or new data request on existing connection right so in the latter case server needs to find which client has sent the data right because the server can unblock from the select system call when either the client c2 
has sent the data or when the client C3 has sent the data. So when the server S unblocks from the select system call, it has to identify that it is unblocked from the select system call because of which client. So when server starts, the first thing it does is to create a master socket. A socket to detect arrival of new connection requests from new client. So this master socket, once it is created by the server, it is used to give birth to rest of the communication file descriptor for the clients. We have already visualized this scenario in the introductory lecture of this module. So C provides a predefined data structure called ft underscore set which is a collection of file descriptors. So you can define the variable read FTS set of data type ft underscore set. So ft underscore set is actually a data type that is provided by standard C APIs and it is used as a collection of file descriptors. So remember file descriptors are simple integers. So fd underscore set is nothing but it is a collection of file descriptors which the server is maintaining. So we will discuss more about this fd underscore set when we will be actually discussing the implementation of TCP server. So guys, let us have a separate discussion on FD underscore set data structure that is provided by standard C API. So C provides a data structure called FD underscore set, which is actually a collection or a set of file descriptors. So the data type is FD underscore set and read FDS is actually a variable. So in socket programming in C, we need to use this data structure to maintain our file descriptors. So as we said that FD underscore set is actually a collection. So you can visualize this data structure as a collection. So initially, let us assume that this collection is empty. Now suppose you have a server S and there is a client C1 which sends connection initiation request to the server S. Right? So the server S will invoke the accept system call and create a communication file descriptor for client C1. Let this communication file descriptor is 6. So 6 will be added to the read FDS set. Similarly, when the client C2 gets connected with the server S, the server S will create a communication file descriptor for the client C2. Let this communication file descriptor is 7. So 7 will be added to the FD underscore set or read FDS set. Similarly, similarly, whatever be the number of communication file descriptors the server has created in order to service the connected clients, all those communication file descriptors will be added to this FD underscore set. Right? So FD underscore set is actually a inbuilt data structure provided by C API, which can store and maintain the communication file descriptors in socket programming 